What's up guys? Welcome to the Cryo Effects YouTube channel. And this video today, we're talking about CO2 cylinder markings. In other words, CO2 tank markings. When you get these cylinders, you always wonder what the markings on top of them mean. Well, guess what? We're gonna decode those decryptic messages right here on this video so that you walk away and you know exactly what you're looking at and how to determine what you need to determine. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get talking about these. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna bring the camera up close and show you these as I talk about them because you can't see them from there. And spoiler alert, that tank is actually not what we're gonna be talking about today. That's for my custom car that's getting built, but that's on a whole other video, a different channel possibly. So that is a nitrous tank. Again, we're not gonna talk about that here. Anyways, we're talking about this tank, these tanks, and of course, this big mama over here. This is the bulk tank, not a doer. And right in, five, four, three, two, boom. That's right, guys, so jumping right in here on the close-up, what we have is, as you see, there's two different lines of information on each tank. Now, generally, they're gonna fall into one of these two lines, and nice and neat lines, but there's some tank manufacturers that just don't do that. So you might see markings all over the place like we're showing you right now. However, in general, we're gonna talk about these two lines as if they were nice and neat and perfect. As you see, the first line says TC, which means Transport Canada. This is a Canadian stamp. This is the indication that that line at the top is for Canada or Canadian reference. Underneath that, you have DOT, which is Department of Transportation. That's a United States regulatory commission that regulates all of transportation. If you haven't heard of them, don't get a fine by them. Let me tell you that. <laughs> so moving forward, we're going to kind of jump as we move forward between both of these. At the top, and I'm going to reference some of these. They may not be the exact alphanumerical codes or numbers, but in general, we're going to cover these so that you can reference them and explain exactly what they are. So the next set after the TC or the DOT is going to be a 3ALM next to TC, which means three aluminum. It's just a manufacturer. It's required by the regulatory commission. It means manufactured material. The same correlation for the United States stamp would be 3AL. However, some of these are going to have 3AL 3000, 3AL another set of numbers. Those numbers themselves are actually the working pressure of the tank at room temperature. So it's what the tank is able to handle safely. That's basically what it means. So moving forward, you also have your steel tanks. On the steel tanks, you might have something like ICC, which is a composite material, or you might have something else that dictates and says that it's steel. Again, this is going to be an alpha numeric number, typically with numbers and letters, alpha numeric. Now, moving on, you have your working pressure, which we already discussed. On the TC upper line, you're gonna have a number. Some of the numbers are gonna say 207 or they're gonna say some other three digit number. Canada rates their pressures in bars, not PSI. So make a note of that. If it's on the TC line, it's going to be labeled in a three digit number, most likely, unless it's a nitrogen tank or something else. That's a whole different video. However, those are gonna be measured in bars. In United States, we don't measure in bars. We measure because we gotta be different, right? We're gonna, we measure in PSI. That's why on the aluminum, it says 3000. Some of the other aluminums, they may say something like 2265, or they might say something else. Um, there's many different tanks. We'll, sh we'll show you some pictures here and show you those. But regardless, that notes the pressure that it can handle at room temperature. Please make a note of that. Not the pressure that the tank will output at, but the pressure the tank can handle and it's required by either DOT or TC. Now, moving on from there, you have a serial number for the cylinder. When the manufacturer makes cylinders, generally they're going to put a serial number on it. So moving forward here, we have the manufacturer's name and of course the manufacturer number. Luxfer is a manufacturer name. Other companies will put their names on the cylinder if there's a name that shows up. Catalina Cylinders may do the same thing. The name will show up and you'll recognize the name as it's all alpha. Yes, they're all alpha characters, as a name normally is. <laughs> now, 
When you're looking for the manufacturer number, it's going to be an alphanumeric number, and it should normally be M with four to five digits afterwards. And those four to five digits signify that that is a manufacturer number, and that is a number that is unique to the manufacturer themselves. Moving forward, you also have a number, number, a letter, and then two numbers. Again, alphanumeric. That is going to be the first month and year, two-digit month, two-digit year that the cylinder was hydro tested and generally that alpha code inside there is relevant to the person that's doing the hydro testing on one of these tanks we have a 12a87 this tank right here that means that this tank first hydro tested on month 12 of year 1987 so if this tank is being sold anytime within five year period of that first hydro testing date that is an okay tank and that can technically be refilled now these tank facilities that fill these tanks they look at all the different markings on the tank and we're going to get into those in a minute so stay tuned because i got a special case with this one right here however they look for the newest hydro testing date video on hydro testing later on this channel or somewhere else on this channel not here we go in depth on that the hydro testing just certifies that that tank is safe that the tank can handle the pressure and all that good stuff now if a company sees a tank that is out of hydro testing date they will not fill your tank and you have to go get a hydro tested the cost is determined based on different facilities but it can range anywhere from 30 dollars to 100 dollars. i've seen it all over the place so what is the special case well, not this tank but with this tank the special case is this this tank as you can see here we have a lot of different numbers on it you have four dash 57, 4 52, 1 18, which means that was month one of 2018, which that could have meant a lot earlier. And the reason why is if you look farther here, 4 25, 4 or 5 31, 5 36, that means this tank was hydro tested back in 1925. 1925. <laughs> that tank's been around longer than I have. Yes. So, it's actually pretty unique. I believe that the first hydro testing date on this was somewhere around 1925. So anyways, as you can see here, all the different stamps, the steel tanks are normally gonna have more because they've been around steel or composite. They've been around a lot longer than these aluminum tanks. The aluminum tanks, any scratches, any dents, any cracks, obviously, uh, if you paint it, they might reject the tank because you painted the tank because they can't see stretch, uh, stretch cracks or stress fractures or any discrepancies with the tank. So those are just some things to look out for. You want to make sure it's hydro tested and you want to make sure that it's within five years of being hydro tested. So if you see tanks online for sale and they're super cheap, probably not hydro tested and that's why they're cheap. Be aware of that. The other markings that you may see on a tank. Some of them may be like a S080, which is another alphanumeric code. And all that means is aluminum, 80 cubic feet. So some of the tanks may actually have markings in the tanks that on the, in the tanks. Yeah, you wouldn't see them if they're in the tank. They might have markings on the tanks that tell you what the cubic feet of the tank is or how much cubic feet of gas it can hold. So uh, those are different markings that are on the tanks we kind of covered the general gist of them here. Some of the other markings that we didn't cover yet, you may see a B20 or a B and another number. The B means beverage, that that tank is certified for beverage use only. With CO2 tanks, some tanks are certified just for beverage use. And it's just the, the impurity of the gas that's in it. And there's some special handling that goes along with that, of course, on another video but you may see that. So B20 would signify beverage, 20 pound tank. Another identifier you may see is a U18 or some other alphanumeric code like that. What that means is that's the output threading on the tank itself. U18 being a specific output thread. Now, last but not least, one of the other more important markings on a cylinder and our bonus tip for this video when you're searching for how to tell if a CO2 tank is empty or how to know how much CO2 is in a CO2 cylinder, you can do that by yourself. And the easiest way to do that is this. You find a CO2 cylinder that you have and it will have a T 
with a number. L-R-A-T-W with a number. That is the tar weight of the cylinder when it is completely empty with the valve on it. So all you need to do is find that T, the letter T, and then the number, or a TW, and of course, the number after it, and put the tank on a scale, and whatever that weight is, total weight of the cylinder, CO2 cylinder, CO2 tank on a scale, you take that number minus the tar weight of the tank, and that's how much product you have left in the cylinder. Now, as a note here, some of these may have KG after the number, which means that's weight in kilograms. Just to make a note of that, you don't want to confuse it. Okay, so now that we've discussed the high pressure CO2 cylinders or the high pressure CO2 tanks, we're gonna also talk about the Dewar tanks or what you call as Dewar, but they're actually CO2 bulk cylinders. You have a couple of different reference markings on the top. Normally they're not gonna be on the CO2 cylinder itself for the bulk tanks. They're gonna be on a plate. That plate's gonna be on the tank itself on one of these arms. And of course you're gonna have some tags that are on the top of each port coming off. You have your vent port, your liquid port, you have your gas port, and of course you have your pressure building system. The pressure building system is a valve that you turn open or close that comes from out the tank back into the tank. And all that does is allow the pressure to build itself on the tank, another video, not on this one. So on this particular tank, we're going to reference those different types of valves on top and the different markings. We'll have some pictures on the screen here that you can see now. And of course, on some other cylinders that are similar to this, you have the plate that shows the tear weight, of course, so that you can determine how much product is in this tank as well when it's filled, and also the serial number, the manufacturer, and any other warning labels that come along with it. Now, the markings that are on these CO2 cylinders, regardless if it's the bulk tank, or any of these other cylinders. High pressure cylinders, more importantly, are going to have label. They're all gonna have labels, but these high pressure cylinders may have a marking that says DS or D or S or ST. All of those mean siphon tube, dip tube, siphon, things like that. A ductor tube, ET, you may see something like that that's stamped on the neck itself, not necessarily on the bottle. The reason being is if that valve is replaced, the valve is actually what has the siphon tube in it, as you can see here. You may see some of those markings on here or here, or somebody may write it on there with a paint marker so that you can be notified of what that is. Now. All tanks are going to have a label on it and that label is going to say what type of gas it is. If you remove that label, that's a big problem. And the reason being is they're, they can't take your word of what gas was in it. They're going to have to do some procedures to clean the tank out and make sure that the right gas is in it. If the places that you're taking the tank to are actually following very strict protocol, then that's what they're gonna do. Otherwise, they'll just take your word for it and I don't wanna put words in anybody's mouth, but they'll look at the valve and then they'll just take your word for it. However, don't rely on that, just like you shouldn't rely on taking a painted tank in to get it filled. You wanna be safe, definitely not sorry. All right guys, so that's it for this video on CO2 cylinder markings or CO2 tank markings, whatever you wanna call those. And I hope that you have a better understanding on exactly what these markings mean, what references they indicate, and of course, more importantly, the different types of tanks and all that good stuff. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment in the description section. Wait, not the description, the description's our job. In the comments section. If I didn't catch that, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Leave a comment in the comment section below and do me a favor, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe button, and of course, notification bell so that you are notified every time we do a new video on this channel. Until next time, this is Cryo Effects. I'm out.